Good morning. Good morning to you. It is Monday. There we go. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Ooh, hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well. I had an interesting weekend, but good morning. Good morning. This is going to be quick and sweet. Quick and sweet. I hope you had a good weekend. I hope you did something fun. I hope you did something that you enjoy. I hope you did something that uh, made you smile. I know we always trying to make sure that everybody else is happy, but hopefully you did something this weekend that made you happy and made you smile. Um, yeah, so real quick, uh, puppy distribution system thought that I wanted a puppy. So coming home last night, I'm walking in and a little puppy just walks up to me or to my son. Come here, Louis. Um, so this is him. <laughs> His name is Louis. Lu well, the, the, uh, tag on him says Lewis Dean and he got on a I didn't even notice this he got on a uh I don't know if it's supposed to be Versace or something he had on a little collar so this is who I've been babysitting since yesterday so yeah so I put a call out to the owner I put a, a message on the ring camera app but I don't know we're gonna see uh he peed once in my twice in my house on my floor Luck, luckily they're the hardwood floor so i don't have to worry about that i just mop it up but i don't do peeing on the floor the dog that i have he don't pee on the floor he's trained i'm talking about thoroughly trained and mr so-and-so want to come in here and be peeing on my floor he don't know he'll get put on that balcony all day long i'm just saying i'm just saying listen i don't live in houses that smell like pee and dog my house smells fresh and clean, and we're going to keep it that way, Mr. Lewis uh, V. Dean. That's the name on this thing. So if y'all know somebody who got a dog that looked like that, and his name is Lewis V. Dean, I think that was the name, then uh, let them know that I got their dog, and I'm trying to get in contact with them, but one of the numbers on his collar is uh, disconnected, and the other number on his collar is uh, a mobile link or something like that, but I've left messages, texts, and everything, so... I thought I'd put out put that out there. But anyway, so we're going to babysit him for another day. Um, it's already people saying, hey, they want the dog. I, I might give them the dog or I might go up to PetSmart and see if he got a chip or something like that. But he's cute. Come here, Louis. He's cute. Yes, he is. He's, uh, he's cute. See? He's cute. Louis Dean is his name. Louis, say hi to the people. Say hi to the people. Say hi for the people. Yeah, I'm going to take him to um, PetSmart and see if they got a chip or something like that. Or if he has a chip or something like that. But, um, yeah, the peeing on the floor thing, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. Um, yeah, but anyway, let's get into it, y'all. Happy Monday. I hope you are doing well. I hope that your weekend was good. Good morning, Venice. I hope that everything that you set out to do this weekend, you were able to do. Um, what did I do this weekend? Went shopping with my son, went, got him a haircut, uh, went to eat, went to the mall, sat in the mall, people watched. You might see my video where I was just in the middle of the mall, people watching. Can I share something with you? There's a lot of different people in this world. And when you get out and go look at the different types of people that are in this world, you'll see that. Listen, I saw some of every video game character you could ever think of. I saw what people would consider normal looking people. I saw people dressed in goth. I saw people with red, green, blue, different color hairs. I was just, inter I was, I was, I was entertained. I was uh, interested and intrigued by watching all the people. And you know what? God loves each and every one of them. <coughs> God loves each and every one of them. Even the ones that I saw that had skulls and bones on their clothes and on their belts and even the ones who had who have piercings, tattoos, it doesn't matter. God still loves his creation. He still loves his creation, right? Don't ever think that just because of what a person looks like on the outside that God feels a certain kind of way towards them. Because can I say this? That God doesn't look upon the appearance. He looks upon the heart. 
God looks upon the heart. Good morning, the biggest. Good morning, Denise. Good morning, Venice. He looks upon the heart. So don't let people think because they look well put together that God loves them more than the person who doesn't look as well put together. Can, can I say that for somebody who may have uh, trouble thinking that God loves them? Huh? God loves you with piercings, tattoos. He loves you even when you don't love him. Because guess what? It's a lot of people who don't have piercings and tattoos. And they may have traditional color hair, but they got hate in their heart and they're a murderer from the inside. Huh? You didn't know that? That when you hate people, the Bible says that's murder? Ooh, yeah, in your heart. Your heart. You can be a murderer. So with that being said, don't let people fool you into believing that, oh, because they look the part. Good morning, Loba. Good morning, Jada, Jada Getty. I've been up all night with anxiety about end times. Would appreciate prayers. It, you, I got you. I got you. I got you. But let's get into it this morning. I missed y'all over the weekend, but I just needed to take a break. I went up at church yesterday and I went, I visited another branch of my church and I went and I got prayer from the prayer from one of the prayer team members, Miss Marie and Miss Marie blessed me. She blessed me. She told me that even when I pray and I do certain things, I need to make sure that I'm taking care of myself spiritually and I'm praying things off of me that someone may have left with me during our prayer. She just educated me on some things. Let's just put it like that. Let's just put it like that. So I'm better now. I'm, I, you know, I'm stronger. I have more knowledge. I have more wisdom. So that's awesome. But anyway, the title of the message today is prevail, 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 prevail. What does the word prevail mean? You know, I like to educate whoever come through because sometimes I don't know. huh? So what does the word prevail mean? Mm, let's see. Ooh, prevail. I like this. It is a verb, mean it is something that you do. So you prevail over the situation. I prevail over the situation. So what does prevail means? It means prove to be more powerful than opposing forces. Uh-oh. Prove to be more powerful than opposing forces. To be victorious. In other words, to be a winner. In other words, to triumph. In other words, to overcome. In other words, something is coming against you. We don't know what it is. It could be spiritual. It could be physical. Good morning, soulistic. It could be spiritual. It could be physical. But something somewhere is coming against you. And that's okay because we know as believers, we know that the weapon, uh, what does it say? Uh, our fight is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers. Get down. Spiritual. Get down. Y'all, I done found a puppy and I'm trying to be a nice neighbor and keep it for whoever, but he think he gonna jump up on my couch. I'll come right up out of the Holy Spirit and, and, and pop your butt and get you down off my couch. Anyway, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, power, spiritual hosts of wickedness. We, we wrestle against things that are unseen, right? But we can prove to be more powerful than the opposing force. So what does that mean? This opposing force is coming against you with anxiety, depression, fear, doubt, whatever the enemy is coming against you with. However, prevail. Mm, 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 mm. Come on, help me, Holy Ghost. Prevail means that I am more powerful Ooh, than the opposing force. This is the opposing force. This is the thing that wants to do me harm. This is the thing that wants to pull me out of the will of God. This is the thing that's coming against me. This is the thing that wants to see me fail. This is the thing that doesn't believe that my God is bigger. This is the thing that does not believe that he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. This is that thing. Whatever that thing is, you find your thing. I don't know what your thing is. I know what my thing is. But this thing keeps coming against you. But prevail. Who prevail says that it is more powerful than the opposing force. It says that you will prevail over the opposing force. What's your it today? Put your it in the comments. What's your it? What's the thing that keeps coming against you? Is it the fact that you don't have enough to pay your bills? That's a thing. Poverty is a spirit, huh? 
You know that, right? Prosperity is of the Lord. Not saying that if you're rich, you're with the Lord. I didn't say that because it's a lot of rich demons. But what I am saying is, is that when you give your life to Christ, a part of giving your life to Christ is to have your needs met. That is one of the promises of God that hovers, is, hovers over your head. That poverty is not necessarily your portion anymore unless you allow it to be. How do we not allow it to be? We'll talk about offerings and tithes and all this other stuff later. But there is a key that goes into the door and unlocks prosperity through Jesus Christ. He says, I give you the power to get wealth. Deuteronomy. He says, I will add richness to you and add no sorrow to you. Yes, he said, I have no problem with you having money. I have a problem when money has you. I say that a little louder for the people in the back. God has no problem with you having money. He has a problem with money having you. Let's keep on going. Prove more powerful than opposing forces. Well, what does the Bible say about prevailing, about being more powerful than the opposing forces, whatever those opposing forces are? Colossians 1, 16 through 17 says, for by him, him, God, Jesus, all things were created in heaven and earth, meaning your enemy and that opposing force was created by him. Mm, got to be more careful. Visible and invisible. Come on, somebody. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things. And in him, all things hold together. What does that mean? That means dominions, rulers, authorities, thrones, your enemy, those forces, those things coming against you, your doubt, your anger, your disappointment, your fear, the enemy himself, his, de his demonic forces, his isms, his schisms, your, the people who want to betray you, the people who really don't like you, but they just tolerate you. The, the spiritual things going on behind the scenes. He says he created them all. Therefore, he has authority over them all. Oh, we're going to get there before I leave. I promise we're going to get there before I leave. That means he has authority over that thing that's coming against you. He has authority over that thing that's running in your generational line. He has authority over that thing that tried to take your mother out. Your mother escaped it, or maybe she did not escape it, but now it's coming after you. Okay, okay, Colossians 1, 16 through 17. Colossians 1, 16 through 17. For by him all things were created. Can I submit for your consideration that there is nothing stronger, nothing more powerful, nothing bigger than the Lord Jesus Christ? Because for him and through him, all things were created by him and he is before all things. That means before your enemy thought that they were going to do what they thought they were going to do. Before the plot, before the plan, before the strategy, before your enemies got together on the phone and on the text message and start talking about what they were going to do and how they were going to do it. God heard the plot and the plan. And that's why God was able to prepare you for the plot and the plan. Let's look at Joseph. God knew that his brothers wasn't going to like Joseph because Joseph said, hey, I had a dream that you all are going to bow down and worship me. Joseph had a dream that he was going to be king. Sometimes you can't tell everybody everything about you. They just got to figure it out in due time. <coughs> but Joseph told his brothers, his brothers got mad and angry. They said, who are you that you think we're going to bow down before you? And the story played out. They threw him in the pit. They went back and lied and said, yeah, he's dead. And yeah, yeah, he's not around. He's not around. He's not around. Joseph was well and alive. He just was in a pit. He also had to go through a prison stage. How many of you know that sometimes you got to go through the process in order to get to where Joseph ultimately ended up? Joseph ultimately ended up in the palace. But even when he got to the palace, Potiphar's wife <coughs> is pulling on him trying to make him do things that he doesn't want to do with her. Even when you get to your ultimate destiny, even when God elevates you, do you not know that at every level you have different things that you have to contend with? 
He had to contend with something in the pit. He had to contend with something in the prison. He had to contend with something in the palace. But in each and every one of those stages, God was with him. Come on, somebody. Can I get some claps for that? No matter what comes against you in the pit, no matter what comes against you in the prison, no matter what comes against you in the palace, God is going to still be with you. Prevail. Prevail, 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 prevail. <coughs> I want you to prevail. I want you to, by definition, prove more powerful than the opposing forces. I want you to prove more powerful than the opposing forces. I want you to prove more powerful than the opposing forces. Come on, somebody. Mm. Proverbs 19 and 21. Many are the plans in the mind of a man. I know you got plans, things you want to do, things the way you think it should be the way you think it should have panned out, who you thought you should have married, who you thought the relationship you were supposed to be attached to, where you thought you should have lived, where you thought you should have been. I, I understand. I'm with you. I have plenty of plans that I thought was supposed to be it too, but I found out that it wasn't. Many, of the plans in the, many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. Let's think about that. <coughs> many are the plans in the mind of a man. Or woman, you got plans. There's a thing that you see or you have a vision for your life, whether you recognize it or not. Whether you get that vision through your own inclination, you figure that this is what I'm going to be in two years. This is what I'm going to be three, four years. I'm going to do this career. I'm going to marry this type of man or woman. Da, 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 da. You have a plan for your life, right? Or you may just look at Instagram on a daily basis and be like, hmm, that's nice. I want that. Hmm, that's nice. I want that. However you plan you're visualizing your life in some way, shape, form, or fashion. And you're going to have many plans in your mind. You're going to plan to marry that man and plan to marry that woman that God really doesn't want for you because God has somebody better. Mm. You're going to plan to go into that career and you're going to plan to go and get that job when actually God really wants this direction to be for you. Many are the plans in a man's mind. We got stuff flowing through our mind all day long. But the part of this, it says... But it is the purpose. You might have plans. But God has purpose. Come on, somebody. You might think this would be nice. This would be a good thing to do. But God has a purpose. Meaning this is not only a good thing to do, but this is a God thing to do. Do you not know that each one of us has an alignment, meaning there is a road that we will get on at some point in time where we are smack dab in the middle of God's will for our life? Now, if you don't want that and you want your way and you want your will, okay, God will give you that too. That's called the permissive will of God. That means he'll let you go off path for a little while. God will let you stray. He's a good shepherd. A shepherd even lets their sheep stray for a little bit. But one thing about in real life, a shepherd, a sheep that keeps straying, that shepherd will literally break the sheep's leg and carry the sheep just so the sheep will stay on course. That's in real life. Now, God, Jesus is a good shepherd. Do you not know that some of the things you went through was spiritually God breaking your leg and then carrying you because you kept going off path, because you kept going astray, because you kept going against the will of God for your life. The plan that God has for you is so much bigger than that relationship. I know he said he love you. I know she make you feel nice. I know y'all go and put Graham, Instagram pictures <coughs> and y'all travel all over the world. I get it. But there is something bigger. God has a purpose for you. You plan to be with that purpose, with that person. But God has a purpose for the relationship he wants you in. Okay, okay, okay. You planned, okay, can I speak my testimony? You planned to be this high power attorney at, 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 at the biggest skyscraper in Atlanta. That was your plan, Tanisha. And you were starting to realize that plan because you worked on the 31st floor of the truest, well, it was a SunTrust building, but it's the truest building now in the middle of downtown Atlanta. You worked on the 31st floor. So the plan was beginning to unfold. However, one day, 
<coughs> when I looked out and I saw this is too stressful. I don't want to do this. This is not even, this is not, this is not, this is not. The purpose of God began to unfold. And then I became a makeup artist. And God then had me in the face of several women because God knew that there was a point in time in my life that I did not have good relationships with women because of the relationship I had with my mother growing up. We can get into that all later. Sometimes you just, listen, can I just suggest something? Sometimes you got to go to, to therapy and just work it out. It's some things that all of us are walking around with that we got to go to therapy and work it out. Huh? Alcohol not going to do it. Drugs not going to do it. Laying up under a different man or woman every night is not going to do it. Some of us need to go ahead and, and bite the bullet instead of buying Jordans. Go get you an hour or two of therapy. And you'll be amazed at what you will unlock and that what God would then be able to help you walk through. All right. I'm not a therapist, but that was a public service announcement. Hmm? <laughs> I do makeup and have a relationship like that with my mom and I'm in therapy. Listen, Jania, a lot of people had the same story. Huh? No, I... But God delivered me from all of that because I said, God, I want to have a good relationship with my mom. I don't want my mom to die. And then I've had a bad relationship with her. Now, mind you, sometimes I get on her nerves and she get on my nerves, but it's not as volatile as it was before. And that's just through the grace of God. That's just simply through the grace of God. So we make plans, but it's the purpose of the Lord that will stand. That means a lot of your plans might fall through. He or she may not be the one. This or that may not be the career. This or that may not be the place to live. That may not be the church to attend. That may the, A lot of our plans may fall through. And that's where disappointment sometimes come in. Y'all, I used to suffer from disappointment. Like, I was just disappointed. Like, I would try and it wouldn't work. And I'm just like, oh, until God had to reveal to me, Tanisha, those were your plans. They were not my purpose. So now that I feel like I'm standing in, walking in, uh, traveling through his purpose for myself, his purpose is now standing. So now that is a level of prevailing that when you come out of the this level plans that you have for yourself and you begin to operate at a higher level, God then begins to show you how to prevail to overcome the opposing forces. Do you not know that some of us are locked into poverty because it is in our generational bloodline, but God can give you one idea, one idea. I've seen it over and over and over and over and over and over again. One idea and can unlock generational wealth for your family. I've seen it over and over and over and over again. People who I follow on YouTube, people who I follow on Instagram, Nobody in their family was ever millionaires. Nobody in their family was ever thousand dollar heirs. Nobody in their family ever experienced that type of uh, prosperity. But one idea, come on somebody. And God reigns on the just and the unjust. So don't look at people who you think ain't saved. You don't know their relationship with God. That's why I tell us as believers, listen, listen to God more than you listen to your own opinion. Because sometimes you can make yourself an idol or your opinion an idol. And at the end of the day, your opinion and you have to both bow to Jesus. If Jesus says, I'm going to bless that person, he's going to bless them. If Jesus says he's not going to bless that person, then he's not going to bless him. But it's not our job to start passing out who can be blessed and who can't be blessed and who can be loved by God and who can't be loved by God. It's not our responsibility to do that. Our responsibility is to lock into the word of God, to, to, to do what he says to do, not only hear it. He says, be not only hearers of the word, but be doers of the word and to just live our life according to the word of God. When you come across people, Give them what they, if they want to share and hear the word of God, give it to them. You don't have to beat anybody. You don't have to, oh, you going to go to hell. Listen, that, listen, I have, you have, nobody has a heaven or hell to put anybody in. There's only one judge and his name ain't Tanisha. His name ain't your name. The best thing you can do is love people, pray for people, ask God to help people. That's the best thing you can do. The best thing you can do. Welcome in, Tabby. All right, let's keep going. <coughs> Excuse me, four more minutes and I'm out. Whew. Revelations 1 and 8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Can I just leave this here? 
that before your obstacle, your issue, your problem, thank you so much, Benice, before your may be returned to you 10,000 fold. May the Lord abundantly bless you for blessing me. Thank you. Before your obstacle, before your issue, before your trouble, before your problem, before the situation came about, he says, I was the alpha. I am the alpha. That means he came before all of the things you're going through. He came before the mama issues. He came before the daddy issues. He came before the depression. He came before it. And then he says, I am the omega. In other words, what he's saying, I am the beginning of you. And I am the end of you. I created you. He says he's the author and the finisher of your faith. <coughs> he says, I am the author and the finisher of your faith. That means whatever happens on the in between, he has power over that. Because the end of this says he's the almighty. He is who is and who was and who is to come. That means all of the in between. He has it covered. Huh? He has it covered. He has your problem covered. He has you covered. He has your family covered. He has your children covered. He has your business covered. He has your money covered. He has your health covered. He has your mind covered. Come on, somebody. You're going to catch it before you leave. He has you covered in totality. Everything going on with you, he has it covered. I said, he said, I am the alpha and the omega who is, who was, and who is to come. That means he has your past covered. That's what salvation did. It covered your past under the blood. When you accepted Jesus, that means your past was washed away. The Bible says, behold, he who accepts Jesus is a new creature. Behold, all things are made new. It says, who what? Who is? That means present tense. What are you going through present tense? What is the issue present tense? He has that covered now. He says, I change not. I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's what the word of God says. And then he says, who is to come? That means the things that's coming down the pipeline, the things that you don't know yet, the things that you can't see. Do you not know that God stepped out of eternity to step into time to become our savior so he could see what's going on here on this earth so that he could also be familiar with our sufferings so that he wouldn't look from only his perspective as a deity and as a God, but he could see from his perspective as a human. He's a hundred percent God and a hundred percent deity. He said, who is, who was, and who is to come. That means I got your 2025. I got your, can I just speak to somebody who's been worrying and anxious? He says, I got your 2025. I got your 2035. I have your 2045 covered. I have your 2075. If you live that long, he says, I have your 23,000. Remember, what are we in? 20, what year are we in? 2024? <clears throat> he says he got your year 2100. If the Lord tarry and not come back, he's got you covered. He is, was, and is to come. Put the anxiety down. Take it to the altar. Leave it there. Can I just suggest for your consideration, a lot of the things you think you have control over, you don't have control over them anyway. So just give your anxiety to God. Give your doubt to God. Give your depression to God. Give it all to God. Just stop caring. Huh? I say, chuck it in the bucket. Huh? When I used to cuss, I used to add another word to it, but I'm not going to do that this morning because I don't cuss like that no more. So uh, just chuck it in the bucket. In other words, stop worrying about stuff that you have no control over. Get up, do your best, wash your face, brush your teeth, wash your tail, put on some clothes, put on some smell good, and, and comb your hair, say your prayers, do your devotion, and step out into this world and do the best that you can. That's all that's required of you. Everything else... Hey, you get it how you get it. Love God, treat people right. Put it down. It is what it is. We don't know what this economy is going to be. We don't know what the politicians doing. We don't know what our local government, you worried about what the president doing. Half of us don't even know what our councilmen doing in our own city. Half of us don't even know what the Board of Education doing in our own city. And we sitting up worrying about what Donald Trump doing and why Biden is sending billions of dollars over to Ukraine. I'm getting ready to get off this live so I can go make me a couple dollars so me and mine can kind of be straight. I can't be worried about what, what they doing over there. I can't be worried about whether he's sending billions of dollars over there. I'll be worried about it when he send a check to my house. 
I love y'all with the love of the Lord. I do. I'm so serious. I'll be worried about him sending a check to my house. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We shall prevail. Prevail means to be more powerful than the opposing force. God, may you put a spirit of prevail on each and every individual on this live, me included, Father God. I pray right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you will strengthen us and fortify us to overcome the opposing forces. Whatever those opposing forces are, God, keep us safe. Keep us protected on every side. God, and fortify everything concerning us. Fortify our mind, our body, our spirit, our strength. God, cover us. May your angels take charge over each and every individual locked into this live. God, may you keep and cover us, God. Keep and cover our children. May the enemy not find a crack or crevice to slither through in the name of Jesus. And if he does, may the consuming fire of God be against him in the name of Jesus. May the very blood of Jesus be against him. May the enemy's hand be severed. <coughs> if he tries to touch or illegitimately access anything that belongs to us in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that you would restore, replenish everything and anything that canker worm would try to take away, God. I pray that you would give us strategy, God, that this is chess in the spirit and not checkers. God, I pray that in the name of Jesus, you would let the hedge of protection around us and the consuming fire of God around us be turned up 10,000 times hotter, Father God, that the enemy is afraid to touch us, that the enemy is afraid to access anything that belongs to us because he know we will rebuke him and we will cast him out. And your word says that if we resist the devil, he will flee from us. God, may he flee. May an enemy come against us one way, but flee seven or eight different ways in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you right now, God. That's my spinning on my washing machine. God, I praise you and I thank you even now in the name of Jesus that you will keep and cover us, Father God, from all situations and circumstances, Father God. That God, by the name of Jesus, that every knee has to bow and every tongue has to confess that he is Lord. That we will not be afraid. We will not back down. Hush. We will not be disappointed. We will not doubt in the name of Jesus that by your stripes, we know we are healed in all aspects. We are healed mentally. We are healed physically. We are healed emotionally. We are healed psychologically that in all aspects, we are healed. And we thank you for that right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. We cover ourselves with the blood as we enter out into the world today, God. Cover us on our job. Cover us on the highways and the byways in the name of Jesus. And we thank you. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for who you are to us. For it is in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen. If I didn't know no better, and my washing machine started doing that while I was praying, if I didn't know Jesus, Okay, but I know Jesus. Anyway, I love y'all with the love of the Lord. I'll see y'all back here tomorrow, same time, around like 6.30ish. Um, if you want to donate, there is a link in the bio. If you don't want to, God bless you anyway. Somebody just always asks, and I have to always say. So I love y'all with the love of the Lord. I'll see y'all next time. Mwah! Bye! Have a good Monday.